Hey, chaps, it's Racing Inferno here again. Oh, wait, we're starting already? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, we sure are. You didn't do a 3 2 1. Right well, we're not, I'm not playing yet. Oh, okay. I'm leaving this in for comedic effect. <laughs> Hello, folks. I'm Freezing Inferno, and this is a little New Year's Eve special. One year ago, I started LP with this game, Monster My Pocket. I thought, hey, this is fun, and with a new computer, I'll do good at it. Well, I tried it, and my first attempt sucked hard. Horribly. So, here I am, one year later, going to give this game the due treatment it deserves. But I'm not alone, as you heard from my botched intro. I've got a special guest of sorts. Hey everyone, I'm a trickster, and I am helping Freezing Infer through this game. Well, not really, because I'm not being in call, but you get it. Yeah, we couldn't get netplay to work. So, let's just start this, uh, playing thing up, because the way we're doing it is very ghetto. We both have a copy of the video. We're gonna press play and watch it in post-commentary. It's fun. So... On three, Matt. Three, yeah. two, one, go. We've got 40 seconds to talk. So I'll just talk about Monster in My Pocket. It was apparently a toy line made in 1991 by the Morrison Entertainment Group, I guess. I never actually had any of the toys. I just saw the game in Nintendo Power. I was like, hey, this is cool. And I tried it, and I'm like, hey, this is fun. And you think it's fun, don't you, Matt? Oh, yeah, I tried it before. I got to level three, and I stopped. But it, it's a fun game. It's good. Yeah, I think it's good. It's pretty damn good. It, the reason this guy for red screen takes so long is because my initial explanation was going to go over it. But, uh, alright, this should be uh, the end of it right about now. There we go. And now we've got the pocket of somebody. Timmy McMonster Pocket. I don't know. And these jokes won't be funny to me anymore because we already tried this recording once, but I was interrupted by a phone call. Oh yeah, that was fun. So now you know half the stuff I'm going to say. Although I do want to say that this kid is really fat. I mean, the only way you could have such a big pocket, all the monsters have a really fat kid. And a logo, too. Yeah. It's a two-player game, but we couldn't get caught to work. You can either be a vampire or a monster. I opt for a monster because I was the vampire last time. As long as he doesn't fucking sparkle. <laughs> and these guys are small and they like to watch TV on Konami TV. Then some big fucking guy with a buzz cut and a not a buzz cut. I don't know what that what the hell that is. <coughs> anyway, he's the warlock. He sent out his henchmen while they were watching TV. I don't know what they were watching. They better have been watching Arrested Development. That's a rad show. <laughs> God damn, that's a funny show. So that's the plot of the game. The warlock is sent out a bunch of his henchmen. They're all fucking little monsters running around this suburbia house and you're never gonna see the vampire again a uh, brick fell on him stage one monsters in my house which my is house. no uh, not my house timmy mcmonster pocket's house yeah this is it you're That's misleading. you can jump you can slice maybe maybe the guy who made the game is timmy mcmonster pocket maybe this is a recanting a retelling if you will anyway as you can see the gimmick of this game is that you are very tiny running around some little kid's bedroom throwing around the spare key to his house, I don't know. What I just picked up was a heart jar, you get five hits. If you get hit five times, you are totally going to die and lose a life. Luckily, oh, this... Yeah. Oh, you get lives from uh, getting so many points, and you get points by killing things. Yeah, so basically, it's simple, really. And would you believe we're like halfway done the game, not the game, the level already? Uh -huh. I, I stumble and stutter a lot. Anyway, you can either go straight or up. I choose up because up is awesome way. The awesome way. If I can get up this picture. Because of the little banister thing. Which is awesome. And you'll see why. Because you run down it. Now you can slide. Yeah, you can just slide. You can go slide right down and you're invincible and yet smash through the zombies. Then you can just vault off. Oh, look at that, the LPF chat is blinking. Anyway, we're pretty much at the boss now. And he's pretty simple, but I managed to flub it up in true FI style. Ho 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 Here he is, spring -Heel Jack. <clears throat> the reason I know the names is because, like I said, I had a Nintendo Power issue that covered this game. 
way back when. I think I still have that somewhere, but the cover and a bunch of the pages are missing. I don't take good care of my magazines. I really should. I haven't had Nintendo Power magazines since two years ago. Are they still any good? Yeah, they're actually pretty good. I make a habit of picking some up whenever I go anywhere. And while we were talking about Nintendo Power, I killed Spring Hill Jack. They're actually still pretty good, Matt. Actually still pretty good. And that's level one. Stage two, Big Trouble in Little China. No, I mean, the kitchen. More like a Little China Cabinet. Uh-huh. It's not funny to you anymore, Matt, because I used that one already. Her. <laughs> Her. So we're running around, picking up this nice key, and hurling it around. Who leaves a key on the kitchen chair? I don't know. It never falls down. It never, yeah, it doesn't like tilt or anything. It just always falls straight. Gotta love those NES physics. And I just got an extra life, the little chime there. 500 points, I guess, it's a cutoff. And this part pisses me off. The little goblins shooting sugar cubes and these green... I don't know what they are. Lions? Have you ever heard of green lions? That's a big apple. They have yeah, apples apple. and cheese just lying around their kitchen tent. Now this always strikes me as weird. You go in through the uh, left, and you come out through the right in the... Man, this game is throwing everything at you but the kitchen sink. Oh, wait. Yeah, I would just like to say, even though I said it before last minute, um, this kid's really irresponsible with his toys. Yeah, are all these his toys even? I mean, they're all on a murderous rampage. I think they killed the family already. Yeah. You don't see any humans. True. Then they can't imagine fighting a human in this game. I'm amazed there aren't any mice going at you from the Swiss. <laughs> Jeez, bro. That'd be pretty interesting. But why would you fight mice where you can fight these little axe guys and things throwing stuff? And now we're on our second boss, the Yeti, because I refuse to say Abominable Snowman. He's simple. You just hit him twice, then vault over him when he runs around. Then vault over that sparkly thingy he shoots, because that'll freeze you. Also, whoever this family is likes keeping a warp pipe in their freezer. That's supposed to be a tub of ice cream, but it looks like a warp pipe. It does. Also, uh, peas and carrots? Are they supposed to be peas and carrots? I can't think of whatever else it might be. Yeah. Chopped up body pieces? Yeah, maybe that's where the monsters slowly shoved them up to in the, fr in the freezer here. This is a really gruesome game. Quiet. But that's a really cool freezer. <laughs> ah! See, that one was an original joke I came up with on the fly. <laughs> Stage three, crisis from underground. And now we're finally outside the devil house. And yet the monsters are still outside. These guys really, really piss me off. These things that just pop out of the ground. They're from Castlevania. Yeah, they do kind of remind me of the bonehead dragon heads from Castlevania. Except not nearly as lame. But hey, Konami made this game.